Hello, my name is Adam Fry, and welcome to my class on fundamentals. There's a couple of big things that I want you to understand about this class. Number one, I'm not going to necessarily do a complete fundamental discussion because I know that you've had numerous teachers talk with you about daily routines, long tones, lip slurs, single tonguing exercises, scales, 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 uh, and range development. Uh, but I want to talk with you about how we can use these fundamentals, make some special modifications of some traditional patterns uh, to maximize their effect and also to make sure that you're getting real world application. Uh, so understand the things that you've learned about breathing, buzzing, working on fundamentals are all super important to developing your skills but we're going to also address some other ways. Now, number one, let's talk about breathing. We are wind instrumentalists and playing with good air, good support. These are all good fancy words that we hear lots of people talk about. If you're interested in breathing exercises, there's an amazing resource called The Breathing Gym. Uh, they've got a huge number of exercises. Uh, I'm a big fan of the, the book. I'm also a big fan of a lot of the traditional breathing exercises uh, where you're breathing in for four, out for four. In for four, out for four. In for four, out for eight. In for four, out for eight. Uh, a lot of times you'll have people breathing in for two, out for eight. These again are all good exercises that I think with the level of players that we have here in the schoolofbrass.com that you're familiar with some basic breathing exercises. I wanna show you a couple of interesting breathing exercises that I like to focus on uh, that are maybe a little bit different. The first one is called a two, two low isolation. And the concept is most of us have no problems getting a good high breath. The problem is getting the deep breath down low. And so what we're going to do, we're going to take our left hand, we're going to bisect the chest here. This is right at the sternum level here. And so we've got basically 50% up and 50% sort of down with our, with our chest area. And we're going to breathe in for two counts and out for two counts, but we're just going to focus on expansion down low. So uh, you can do this exercise with me. We're going to breathe in for two and out for two, and we want to make sure that everything is just moving down here. We want to try and keep everything stable up here. So just watch this real quick. One, two, ready, and. If you see this area up high expanding or your shoulders expanding up, that's not the goal with this exercise. We really want to focus on getting lots of air down low in that specific muscle group. Don't worry if you don't feel completely full because you're not supposed to in this exercise. It's just about using this lower muscle group. Let's do it one more time. Two in, two out. We're going to do four cycles, just a low isolation. Here we go. One, two. Ready, and. Now that we've sort of activated and made ourselves aware of this low breathing area, what we want to do next is stack the low breath onto the high breath. So this time we're going to breathe in for four and out for four. We're going to try and have two beats down low, two beats up high. You can practice this exercise in front of a mirror and you'll be able to see physically whether you're sort of filling the glass from the bottom of the glass to the top. Now, I do know that air does not behave like a liquid, but it is a very good metaphor for you to have in your brain that it's like pouring a glass of milk or juice or water and that the air builds from the bottom to the top. And the main reason for this is that we want to make sure that we've got the concept that we get the low breath. That's the area of improvement. And if we can get more air down low, then it's going to make the high breath and our total capacity even better. So here we go. 
four counts in, four counts out. We're going to put our left hand here again across the sternum. We want two counts down low, two counts up high. Watching this in front of the mirror, try and look to make sure that you don't start moving the upper part of your body early. Here we go. One, two, three, four. Other things that you can also utilize for this is to take your hand and use this knuckle here. This is from the Breathing Gym with uh, Patrick Sheridan and Sam Palafian. We're going to use this knuckle right here to sort of open up the airway. So you put this knuckle right here between your lips and you can actually hear this nice hollow relaxed inhalation sound. It's not a tight sound, it's a relaxed sound, something a little bit like this. This makes sure that the lips are rounded on the inhalation, that we're getting a good breath down low. Let's try this four in, four out exercise one more time. Left hand across the sternum, right hand up here for when we breathe in. When we exhale, we'll turn our hand out and face it towards us and blow air directly on the palm of our hand. Here we go. One, two, three, four. After working on breathing exercises, the next thing I like to do is spend a little bit of time buzzing. Uh, there's a lot of debates about whether buzzing on the mouthpiece is a good thing or not. I personally feel like it is because it creates a situation where you've got less resistance from the instrument and the embouchure and the vibration has to be much more efficient. And obviously working from the instrument to the mouthpiece to an embouchure visualizer uh, to free buzzing is going from the most resistance to the least resistance and that gives you the opportunity to find out whether you're over muscling the embouchure or if things are happening in a good relaxed manner. So I am a big fan of embouchure visualizers. This is a great way to start. Uh, they're also portable uh, and that's a nice thing. Um, but there's not anything, a specific pattern that you have to do, but I just sort of like to see what's happening with the vibration. Uh, I like to do some very simple glissandos, uh, and you're welcome to do this either on your mouthpiece, uh, or if you have an embouchure visualizer, you can also join. Uh, got an F here. <laughs> looking for is just sort of like a good stretch like what we get physically. Uh, you can do the same exercise on the mouthpiece. What you want to avoid is doing a lot of sudden shifts and sort of slotting notes. I like to think about making sure that the muscles are moving in a very relaxed pattern. Um, it's not going to show up on camera, but if I were to go down and touch my toes, actually I can back up a little bit here, but if I go down and touch my toes, I'm not going to go like uh, and do it really fast. It's going to be something very gradual and we're looking to stretch out the embouchure. Uh, you can also come back do it on our favorite note, B-flat. Oh. 
just some nice things. Uh, again, if you want to use a visualizer, it's a little bit more complicated and a little bit more, well, not necessarily complicated, but it's just more transparent. <laughs> Uh, and it's also much easier, I think, for me to notice whether I'm over tightening the embouchure or if I'm keeping everything nice and relaxed, which is definitely what our goal is. Another great possibility uh, as we get into playing here in just a second is to take a lot of your different warm up exercises, make a play along recording of them, and then to go back and buzz them on the mouthpiece with that recording or buzz them on the embouchure visualizer uh, with that, just to sort of find out if you can sort of refine them a little bit more and make them a little bit more polished. So let's grab our instruments, and if you wanna pull up the PDF that we've got for you, uh, we're gonna do a couple little play-along exercises. I hope that you pulled up the PDF of the different exercises, and this packet of information and exercises is meant to give you just sort of a, a rough outline of exercises that you can do. It's organized in working on long tones and lip slurs, uh, and then we'll have some low range development, some scales, and then some tonguing and range exercises. Uh, you'll notice that most of the exercises are organized with a number one and number two, number three, number four. And my idea when I created this a uh, number of years ago was that a lot of people got bored with doing the same daily routine. And while it's important for you to have stability in your daily routine so that you develop skills, it's also important for you to make a transition into practicing a variety of exercises so that you don't become rigid and inflexible uh, and so that you have a lot of real world application. Uh, making sure that you're doing exercises in different rhythms, different dynamics, uh, not always starting on the same note. Uh, these, are, these are important things because that's the way things happen in the real world, in the orchestra, in the band, uh, in new pieces that you're working on. So the idea is that you would do the odd numbered exercises on odd calendar days uh, and the even number exercises on the even calendar day. So uh, technically, uh, this video is being broadcast on the third, uh, so we're going to make sure and do the odd number exercises. But if you happen to be watching this on, a, on an even day, don't let it make your brain sort of uh, a short circuit or anything like that. So we are gonna start with some long tones where we're looking for stability of sound, uh, stability of air. Very, very important uh, that we have that. Uh, and uh, I like to do uh, these exercises with a tuner uh, or with a wave uh, editor um, that we can actually see what's the stability of the note. If you're not familiar or you've never used uh, the app Tonal Energy, it's one of the best ones ever uh, and it has an analysis function uh, that you can see what notes sound like and look like uh, and it's really, really cool. Um, so uh, let's play some long tones. All right, let's do some playing. This is number one. I'm gonna set the metronome on 72. Uh, depending on what you're trying to control, uh, if you were like trying to work on breath control, uh, and especially if you play tuba, uh, I might encourage you to actually play it at a slower tempo. Uh, if you're trying to work on dynamic variations, uh, which we're gonna talk about, uh, we might actually increase the tempo, uh, but it's good that you do it in a variety of different ways, both for your mental approach and because you play at different tempos in the real world. So we're going to do 72 with an eighth note subdivision. I've got my tonal energy app up on my stand to see what uh, pitch is like. So let's do number one. Here we go. One, two, ready. <laughs> Thank you. 
variety number three, but this time we're gonna throw in a dynamic variation. So there's a lot of varieties that you can do with this. Uh, obviously you can stay at one dynamic. You could pick mezzo forte, that's quite common. Uh, you could also work on them all piano. You could work on them all forte. I would not suggest working on forte early uh, in the practice session, uh, but it's a good thing to have if you're thinking about working on your dynamic contrast. Uh, the other thing I also like to do is work on smooth crescendos and decrescendos while watching the tuner to make sure that we don't start going too sharp as we try and play louder. Uh, so for today, we're going to start piano on all the B flats. We're going to do a crescendo to the change and then a decrescendo on the second bar and then we'll repeat that. So one bar, soft to loud, next bar, loud to soft. Again, metronome on 72, subdivisions, Tonal Energy or a similar tuner app up on your stand. One, two, ready. show you the uh, the tonal energy view my tuning isn't perfect but the main thing is look at the blue and you can see where the crescendos and decrescendos are all happening on the different notes so that's sort of a, a, a neat aspect of what you can do so if you want to do other long tone patterns uh, you can start them on any intervals that you would like you also notice that the even day exercises are ascending because a lot of times what most people do is they always start with the descending pattern descending pattern uh, so one of the ideas to have a little bit of variety is every other day you do an ascending pattern so again these are just a framework for long tones you can also work on it on pedal B flat I actually find that that's actually a great one for sort of relaxing the chops next we're gonna spend a little bit of time working on lip slurs and flexibility exercises now, these are some of the most important aspects of your playing that you wanna work on developing. Uh, it's basically about your, your muscle control here and the ability to shift comfortably, quickly, and smoothly, and also to be able to sustain air while the chops are in motion. That's how we get a good, nice, smooth sound. Uh, there's a lot of different ways that we can practice lip slurs and we can sort of police them. And uh, while I'm not gonna show you, take you through all of these exercises, what I wanna do is show you a couple of ways that you can maximize their efficiency. And so uh, the first tip that I'm gonna give you is we're gonna look at exercise number three. And uh, we're gonna do it a couple different ways. So I have a process with a lot of the ways that I teach and that I practice. And I find that if I have a process, then of course things are become a lot easier. So the idea is that we're gonna practice this exercise number three in three different variations. The first is we're going to make sure that we play it all staccato so that we're working on getting the embouchure and our pitch reference to outline the exercise. So each note articulated and staccato. The next is that we actually want to try to focus on each individual slur and have some repetition. One of the biggest challenges with working on flexibility exercises is that you're constantly moving. You're moving in one direction to another note, then moving up and then back down. Uh, and I don't feel like it really gives the embouchure in our mind enough time to really focus on, hey, am I doing a good slur from B flat to F? Uh, we don't get a chance to evaluate that. So what we're going to do is we're going to do four quick repetitions of each interval. Um, and it's a little bit of a long exercise, but you'll basically go 
dum, he dum, he dum, he dum. Then you change to the second interval from the F to the B flat. Ba-dum, 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 ba-dum. Then you do the B flat to the E. Ba-dum, 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 ba-dum. And then back down. Be-dum, 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 be-dum. And so on and so on. And you'll see this in the example that I'm going to play for you in just a moment. And then the final time that we play through it, uh, we will actually uh, do the whole lip slur as written. Uh, and again, this progression of making sure that we outline with the staccato, and then we've got the four quick skips, uh, and then we're gonna do the actual slur. So let's put this into context. Let's look at number three. So the metronome set on 72, uh, and we'll do the staccato exercise first. This is number three. One and two and ready. We'll do it one more time, and this time try and notice where the embouchure is really settling in. If you struggle with this, you can also play it at half tempo. Let's do it at half tempo, so each click is going to be one note. This is a great tool. They come in different shapes, but the basic uh, situation is that if you blow good air, the ball stays up at the top. And of course, if you're looking for smooth slurs or legato passages, then of course, while you're buzzing, the ball should stay at the top. So uh, you can adjust the setting uh, based on sort of where you need it. Uh, I prefer on this particular model, to have it set about 500 cc's uh, per uh, second. That's about half a liter of air to keep the ball at the top. Um, there's a lot of different models of this, and so uh, there could be different settings, but you'll sort of be able to figure it out. But So here's the slur uh, with the ball at the top. Take that back to our instrument. You can hear how nice and smooth, and it matches up sonically with what we see with the ball on the incentive spirometer. So that's a great tool. Um, and this same concept of staccato, the four quick skips, and then doing the actual slur is a great thing that you can apply to a lot of these different exercises. 
Let's take a quick look at number seven. One variation that I like to utilize is that we don't always start on open and go down the valve patterns. Uh, that sometimes, especially if the exercise is quite high, like number seven, number nine, and number 12, uh, that we actually start on, uh, if like in seventh position or on one, two, and three for our valve combos or two or four, uh, if you're a euphonium and tuba, and then we actually work our way up through the pattern. So this is a great psychology because number one is that you're starting a little bit lower so you can expand into the high range. Uh, and then number two, I find that with the more valves that we have down, especially with lip slurs, that you really have to make sure that everything is really solid and really focused. So for number seven, we'll be starting on an E natural. <laughs> And I would like to do this one. I'm going to do staccato and then play the actual slur each time. So. Now slurred. do that on the G flat. Here we go. One, two, three. skip variation. So I hope you enjoy those patterns and that you apply them in a lot of different aspects of your flexibilities. Uh, they are a little bit long, uh, especially with the four skips, uh, especially if you work like on exercise number eight. Uh, but you can also do a little concise version like what I did there on number seven, where I only did one version of the lip slur in that pattern versus all three versions. Um, the staccato exercise for me is especially gratifying and effective, especially like in exercise number 12, you know, where you're picking out uh, the B flats. And I promise you, if you can't master a lip slur staccato so that your embouchure knows exactly where you need to be, uh, it's not going to magically get it when it's doing all these different levels of approximation. Another thing you can also do with your lip slurs is incorporate some real world dynamic control. A lot of times we're constantly just playing the lip slurs mezzo forte. Uh, so uh, a nice idea is to alternate forte and piano or to start soft and crescendo through the whole exercise or start loud and decrescendo through the exercise. Um, that's one of the ways uh, I like to do like number eight. Um, is to start forte, second time do piano, then do forte. Uh, it's very, very effective. So I hope you enjoy these different varieties of how you can approach your lip slurs. Our next exercise is low range extensions. For me, developing the low range is incredibly important. Uh, you've probably heard lots of teachers talk about and conductors say, the way to develop a great high range is to work on your low range. And it seems counterintuitive. Why would that work? But I have to tell you, 
they're not lying to you uh, and they're telling the absolute truth. And let me explain why. So whenever we play low, we typically do three things and reinforce those positively. We're generally more open, more relaxed, and we use more air. And last time I checked, I don't think anybody listens to someone with good high range and says, you know, they're just too open. They use too much air and they're too relaxed when they play those really high notes. So it's intriguing. And so when we work on the low range, that's gonna help reinforce those three aspects. And the more that we reinforce them, the more likely that they're going to occur as we move into the mid range and the high range. Now, these particular exercises are just basic arpeggios, but they're slurred and they're created where we start on a higher note and we move to a lower note. And what we're looking for is a flexibility in the embouchure, number one. And then number two, we're gonna do a crescendo into the low note. And that's gonna force us to open up relax and use more air. So it's uh, very important that you notice the dynamic pattern. Uh, if you happen to be playing on a three valve instrument uh, in the bar three and bar four, that's a low E flat. Uh, if you just wanna do a false tone on your trumpet, uh, that's totally fine for all these low notes, or you can actually consolidate to just the first two bars. Um, I like to play this exercise very slowly, uh, basically with one click per note at quarter note 72 because I don't think it's a bad thing to work on these so that they're really functional. Uh, if you want an extra bonus, I'll tell you that uh, a really neat version of this is to do uh, the first two bars and then add the final third uh, to make the complete arpeggio in bar three and four and then to actually add an additional uh, minor third below that, so it would actually go down to a C uh, in uh, E flat major, uh, that's quite fun, uh, and things like that. And then you're basically expanding over an octave and a third, but that's a bonus. Just work on the first couple bars, get the crescendos down, get the stability uh, of the embouchure as it shifts, and uh, if you like, uh, if you do struggle with this, similar to the lip slurs, you can absolutely do a staccato uh, version of this exercise to make sure that the embouchure is binding its outline, and then it can progress forward with the slur. So, grab your instrument, let's do a little low range extension. We'll start on E flat, we'll set the metronome on 72. And we'll do these in the fast version, uh, where this is a quarter note. One and two and red. <laughs> and you can breathe as necessary, but I prefer to breathe after the top note. Let's do skip ahead to D flat. Two, ready? I like to play these, uh, actually all four of them each day, uh, but for today we're just doing number one and number three. If you find there's a particular exercise that you like or that you need, don't be afraid to change your recipe uh, in your warm-up. If you need extra flexibility or lip slurs around a certain interval, then add something extra to that. If you're really working on low range development, do some more low range exercises. Understand that this layout of fundamentals and other teachers layouts of fundamentals and plans are just rough guides. You need to make sure that you're getting all the things that you need and adding some extra time to them. Uh, I heard one teacher one time talk about fundamentals as a buffet and you need to, need to make sure that you have a little bit of everything from the buffet, uh, the meats, the vegetables, 
uh, the starches, the desserts, uh, the ice cream, um, but that you also need to make sure that you go back and get seconds of the things that are important for you to be healthy. Um, I still like to go back for seconds of ice cream, just so you know. But those are good ideas to have. Next, we're going to talk about scales. And scales are very important for our technical development. And the patterns that you see here that I have are a little bit different uh, because they're rhythmically, they run from one scale directly into the next scale, which I think is interesting versus always playing around the, the uh, circle of fifths. Uh, the other interesting thing that I like about these is that the rhythm pattern is different. Uh, and then also, like I said, it moves chromatically. Uh, and then you'll also notice in the patterns that I've written a number of different uh, articulations. So in the scheme of being real world and having true application, it's important that we practice some things, occasionally short, sometimes tenuto, sometimes with accents. Uh, it's very easy to get into what I had uh, one teacher say called mezzo-mezzo practice that we're basically doing everything in our fundamentals and practice, very medium, and then when we get into the context of a solo or orchestra or band playing, we can't really call on accents, marcato, staccato, tenuto, loud and soft in these combinations that we need because we haven't really practiced them in that way. So, let's take a look at the scale patterns. I had one teacher one time that told me that I needed to work on three things to make sure that I was able to play technical passages uh, better. And uh, I was like, scales? And the teacher said, what else? And I said, well, uh, interval studies. No. Um, uh, arpeggios. The teacher said, those are scales. And uh, anyway, I said a, a bunch of different things. and. The teacher basically said, no, it's scales, scales, scales. So uh, at some point in time, I'm going to write a book of all different scale patterns. That's going to be called Scale, Scale, Scales. Um, but let's play through this. You want to make sure that you set your tempo at an effective tempo for you. It could be a variety of different uh, aspects. You know, the nice thing about the layout here is that mentally you have to shift from B flat immediately to B natural, to C major, to D flat, to D. Um, and the nice thing about knowing this pattern is that you can start on whatever range that you want. You can start low, you can start high, uh, but it's definitely going to make you think and you'll probably notice many of you that play through these. Uh, that you're gonna sort of uh, sort of have a hesitation uh, on beat four of each of the scales because we're so used to doing the traditional bum ba 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 bing ba 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 bum bum ba ba and we have a long note at the top and a long note at the bottom to sort of let our mind reset. Well, in this particular pattern, you don't get that. So anyway, uh, let's play through this together. Uh, 72 is a little bit quick, I think, unless you're really good at your scales. The other nice thing is that you'll find out very quickly uh, what scales are good for you and what scales are not so good. Uh, and uh, for a lot of students, uh, it ends up being on this particular pattern, uh, bar 2, obviously B natural, uh, then bar uh, 5, 7, uh, and then uh, the... Um, uh, second to last bar in A major. So, but the nice thing is you have to keep this whole exercise at one tempo. We're going to choose 60 for today. This first time, we're just going to play it straight uh, without any articulation differences, uh, but we'll go back and do those next. Two, ready, and go. <laughs> Thank you. 
this exercise alternating dynamics forte on the first bar piano on the second bar you can also do crescendo decrescendo one form that I really like a lot is actually to start loud and then decrescendo to the top note and then crescendo on the way back down uh, it's very unusual for a lot of people because they're so used to always playing high notes loud and low notes soft um, and then uh, the other thing, if you're really, really good, this is a bonus uh, for you, uh, is if you have the ability to do dynamic alter alternations plus articulation changes as well. So, so the bonus pattern would be to do alternate forte and piano, uh, and then say alternate uh, staccato and uh, tenuto, something like that. So, but in this particular case, uh, we're going to go back and we're going to play the articulations as written. Uh, and um, let's actually, I'm going to do this real quick on mine because I can. I'm going to go through and alternate piano uh, and forte so that you at least get a good idea. Oh, and the nice thing is, is that it turns out in the bar that we have accents for E major because of the uh, dynamic pattern that I chose uh, that I get to play that piano. Uh, and then the last B flat high octave scale is going to end up being uh, piano as well. So good luck starting piano, alternating to forte, and then we'll also do the articulations that are in here. Here we go. Oh, by the way, the dynamic changes, I would recommend that they occur on the and of one. So after you play the eighth note in the new key, uh, then the dynamic change would happen after the breath. Ready? crescendos and decrescendos in our long tones, uh, changing from descending to ascending patterns with those, how we can approach flexibility and lip slurs uh, with an intelligent plan of potentially practicing staccato as an outline to make sure our embouchure knows where we're going, uh, that we have those four quick skips so that we can make sure that we know, hey, this is how I do a slur on this particular interval, and then putting them all together uh, and then also working on our low range extensions and finally uh, doing some work on scales. Thank you for being here as part of the schoolofbrass.com and uh, look forward to seeing you in a number of other sessions. <laughs>